Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's time once again for Catalog and Cocktails. It's an honest, no BS, non-salesy conversation about enterprise data management with tasty beverages in hand. Coming to you live from Austin, Texas, as well as somewhere else that you'll find out in a minute, uh, and presented by Data.World. I'm Tim Gasper, longtime data nerd and product guy, joined by Juan Cicada. Hey, Tim, I'm Juan Cicado, Principal Scientist at Data.World, and as always, it's a pleasure. Middle of the week, end of the day, and I am live from New York. Let me go show you exactly where I am here, everybody. There's a nice... Nice. Bridge. We're on Roosevelt Island Thank right you. now, and today we have a very special guest. Because we're live here in New York, it's because we're at the Knowledge Graph Conference, and our guest is a dear friend of mine who I've known for a long time. Now we can pan him in. Francois Scharf. Hello. Francois is a professor at the University of Montpellier and I'm the founder of the Knowledge Graph Conference that we're here. And um, happy to have you. And it's so cool that we're doing this live. And I think uh, hopefully very soon, we'll the, the, Tim, you and me with the guests will be live. So we're planning to do a lot of that uh, in the coming months. But hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. After a year of conference preparation and three days of conference, that went great. And you know, high energy. Awesome. Happy to be here. It feels like I'm live on TV. It's, uh, well, it's we a are, special feeling. Yeah. Well, we are we live. Are live. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So what are we uh, drinking? What are we toasting for? Oh, so we're drinking, we're drinking a beer. I have a Brooklyn summer ale, uh, almost summer, right? Um, yeah. I had brought a special drink. I had bought a bottle of uh, wine, a Pic Saint Loup, which is from uh, Montpellier, which is the area I live uh, uh, in France, where I live in France. But the hotel didn't want to give us a, uh, a, cork, a corkscrew, a corkscrew, or actually want to hear about the bottle. So we're drinking a yeah, we, beer. We actually <laughs> we actually went to the hotel bar to get a drink, and they're like, uh, "No, you have to drink it here." Like, but we're staying here in the hotel. It's like, nope, you can't take it. So. Anyways, we're drinking beer. How about you, Tim? Um, I'm drinking a, uh, a Moscow Mule today. I got my fancy copper cup, uh, and uh, it's going pretty well. So, because we're here in person, we're at the Knowledge Graph Conference. So, cheers to that. How about you, Tim? What are you going to be toasting for? Uh, I'll cheers to future aspirations to be on the road with you all. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> all right. Well, cheers. Cheer, good. Cheers, cheers to cheers that. To that. Yep. Yeah, back in person is... So great. <laughs> it is fun to, so to be able to catch up in person again. So we got our funny question of the day. What kind of a graph is the New York subway system? It is a complex, challenging graph, right? A lot of challenges. I said I said a word, I said dirty when uh, Juan asked me before, but I, I think that's too much. I, I love the subway. I think it has a bad reputation nowadays, but it's uh, over bad because it's not bad at all. It's actually nice. So it's a very complex graph, but a very useful graph. It's a very useful graph, yes. <laughs> anything very you want to add to that, Tim? <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't have anything useful to say. Like the only thing that came to my mind was I was thinking like semantic graph. And then I was like, maybe it's like a frantic graph. I don't know. That was like, yeah, but all right. Well, all right. Let's just dive into this. We're, we're here at the Knowledge Graph Conference and we're going to talk about knowledge graphs. So, all right, Francois, honest, no BS. Why should the world be paying attention to knowledge graphs right now? The world should be paying attention to knowledge graphs because they allow to solve complex problems. And the world is very complex. Uh, and I think the main problems we have, like, let's say, climate change is a complex problem. Uh, poverty is a complex problem. Uh, and there are no simple solutions to those problems. Uh, and they require a lot of people to come together uh, and also a lot of data, obviously, to come together. And knowledge graphs have expressive power uh, to put all this together in order to tackle those uh, those very important issues and the complexity behind those issues. So I want to start off with following up with your, your, your position here. This morning here at the Knowledge Graph Conference, uh, Bob Muglio gave a keynote, and I have here as notes his definition of a knowledge graph, which I would actually call it enterprise knowledge graph. It's four parts: a database that models business entities, the relationships between them, and the associated business rules and constraints. 
And I really like this definition because it's, I mean, it's, it's very clear. It's four parts about it and it's, and, and it combines, it's a database part. And, but it, it is the notion of being able to go bring in the business concepts that we, that we, that's how we see the world, how we see the enterprise and the relationships all related to the conversations we've been having around semantic layers and stuff. But so that's kind of to start off the point of what is a knowledge graph. But we've been talking before about kind of the spectrum, right? From all the way of like data management to governance, all the way to the future of, of, of data and AI and <clears throat> having uh, like the automated enterprise. Mm -hmm. Share us your insights on this. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so right, it, it's the fourth year that uh, we're running the Knowledge Graph Conference and uh, I'm on the program side, so I'm building the program. Uh, you you were part of this, you are still part of this very much, Juan. Uh, and it requires uh, having some kind of vision, I think. Uh, where Where is all of this going, uh, you know, technologically? Um, so staying in the enterprise uh, realm of Knowledge Graphs, uh, you know, so we've seen digitization, we've seen a lot of data coming uh, and there's more and more data always and, and the messiness that is associated to that, obviously. Uh, and so how, how do we solve that, right? How we solve that messiness? Uh, on the other hand, the goal of computer science and uh, digitization is to automate things, right? To create more and more automation, uh, more and more automated decision making. And if you look at how data science works nowadays, you have data scientists building models on data. There's a lot of manual process behind this and the enterprise is modernizing in order to improve that process, to, to make it easier to find, discover the data, to make it easier to integrate or integrate the data upfront. So when you want to work on a model, you can do it easily to uh, retrieve, catalog your data, right? Uh, and so this, this, this is, you know, a process that is going on, but what is ultimately, what, how can we project ourselves and say, what would be a great thing to have down the road? And I think uh, it is automated decision-making. Uh, so let me take an example of that. Uh, imagine having uh, a, a company that um, sells products and, and they have a catalog of products uh, and a product has a price, right? Uh, an intelligent agent there would decide what is the right price for a product uh, at a certain time and, and set that price automatically. Uh, at the end of the spectrum, there's a modification in the JavaScript code <laughs> on the website, right? And, uh, and, and in the database to set that price to a certain value, right? Uh, and getting to that, um, to that decision uh, and that action requires a lot of things, right? It will require um, example, uh, analysis of the sales data, analysis of the marketing data, maybe analysis of the news, what is the current situation of the world. So also, you know, getting data that is external to, to the uh, enterprise and to the company, right? Uh, and then having a model that learns over all data, right? But how, how can we reach that, right? That, that would be the question. Should ask. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> so how do you enrich them? No, I, I love how you're going. I mean, you're, you're you're painting a really cool picture here of like the this is where the world should be at. Right. Right. So you continue, continue. Yeah. Um, so in order to achieve that, well, you it, that agent, right? That intelligent agent is autonomous and and makes you know gather that that data. Uh, obviously, so how, needs that data to be at a level of description integration homogeneity, the, the understanding of metadata, right? The understanding of identity, the management of identity, you know, knowing that uh, this particular product appears in the marketing database here, appears in the sales database here, you know, the IDs are, you know, uh, homogeneous, the way it is described as a product, what is the definition of a product? What is the definition of a price? What are the units? All of this is nicely integrated together. And those days, are all integrated into one common knowledge graph. And I think when you are at that point, you don't even talk about data set anymore because they're not separated. The systems producing this data are directly connect, you know, producing connected data, right? There's, there's no definition of having a data set that sits somewhere that you have to extract and prepare, et cetera, because at this point, you know, your systems are all interconnected in, in, a, in a meaningful way. 
So, so that's where just to just for a quick summary, right? So you have your data there and that is all interconnected and you have intelligent agents that are able to act on this data. Um, and that's what we're, we're working on. And I, that's where, you know, I think that's the vision for, for the knowledge graph conference. And, uh, you know, on one extreme, uh, we have modeling topics, you know, with the track on ontology and taxonomy, which is about modeling. And the other extreme, we have a graph, uh, deep learning, uh, track, which is, you know, about really learning, uh, on, on graphs, uh, and, and there's everything in, in between, you know, for, uh, to go towards realizing that vision. So Francois, I think you you illustrate an interesting sort of vision here around being able to um, have more automated decision making, being able to empower intelligent agents with the right information to do smart things, to act in a smart way. Um, and you mentioned kind of context, different kinds of context, a couple of different times, a couple of different ways as you walked through that. Um, how do you think about context, especially from an enterprise perspective? Like, you know, a lot of people are thinking very much about like governance and metadata management, for example, right? And they might not even be thinking about like knowledge graphs or anything like that at all. They're just like, oh, I need to find and understand my data so that people, humans can do things, right? And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got, you know, you know, R and D teams, and then you know some of the larger companies, some of the more enterprising companies that are actually leveraging knowledge graph technology to do very interesting applications. And then there's sort of this pretty wide spectrum in between. Um, how do you think about that? Is it a progression where you start from one side and move to the other? Can you kind of do both and work your way into the middle, or how do you think about that spectrum? Yes, uh, great question. I, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think that relates to how do you start. We we're we're just out of the graph data science panel uh, at the conference, and um, there was this question uh, towards the end from the, this guy from uh, Procter and Gamble. Say so we have two hundred years of data. <laughs> two hundred years of data. <laughs> A huge huge amount of data. I say graph is great. This is where we're going. We're we want to build a knowledge graph, but how, how do we start? How do we put everything there in, in, into one thing? And, uh, and you know, that your uh, yeah, so. No, so, so let me add to this because this is funny. Literally an hour ago or an hour and a half ago, we were both chairing different panels. So you were chairing the, gra the graph data science panel and I was chairing the data architecture panel, which frankly, it's those two sides of the spectrum that you were just talking about. Right. Just talking about. So you're talking about like, I got to do all this cool stuff yeah. and automation. And I'm like, how do we start? I mean, so we, we were having folks, uh, um, there are folks from UBS and uh, folks from Intuit and, 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 and our colleagues at Enterprise Knowledge were on the panel. And one of the key things, the takeaways there is like, you must start with a problem that, that there is pain associated to it and there's money associated to it. Right. So how do you start in that aspect as well? How do you know? How do you know that you're starting on the wrong problem? Is when you run out. When you first of all, you can't find the budget, or if you do get budget, you run out of the budget and you can't get any more. That is immediately way how you figure out your work on. So there's all these kind of struggles of like, how do I start? Kind of if you, if you're thinking about it, I want to do. I want to get on. I want to start integrating data and knowledge, creating my knowledge graph. How do I start from from from, from the basics, right? But then on the other side, you're like, well, I got all this stuff to go do. I got 200 years of data. I got to do something intelligent for me. So back to your point, Tim, and I'm kind of we're brainstorming here live. I don't think it is going to be a progression because we can't say, "Hey, let's start with the foundation. Let's start with the metadata." Other folks, you wait. That's that's not realistic. I mean, I think the the folks who are doing the advanced AI, ML, deep learning, and graph learning, and all that stuff, like they're hitting the ground running as much as they can. On the other side of the spectrum, we're looking at it as like, like for the folks who are kind of the foundations, like, oh, you're not doing it right, or, or or it should be done. You're lacking governance. You're lacking this, but you're like, it's fine. Let's just let people go do things, and little by little, we'll kind of go start dots. When? I don't know, but I think we should at least innate, we should acknowledge that we're going to let people do things on a different side of the spectrums, and we should strive to figure out to meet somewhere. Acknowledge that there is a middle somewhere. We don't know what that is. And let's go look for that middle. Because otherwise, we're just going to have silos. 
silos of the application, silos of the foundation, silos of the cool thing, people people doing cool things, but they don't meet. And then we're gonna keep being in the same place. I don't know. I'm ranting already. Let me shut up. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I uh, yeah. So um, it's interesting that first that the two panels uh, kind of converge on that same problem, same issue of where do I start, right? And there's a lot. One of the conclusion I think that was among the panel for that question was like the last thing you want to do is throwing your all this data into a knowledge graph right you you have a lot of data you don't want to go and, and throw everything there just for the sake of having a knowledge graph as as one said start with the problem uh, what is a business question that you're uh, trying to uh, to solve or business problem you're trying to solve uh, and that requires you know accessing an integrated integrating several data sets and, and start there uh, start with the minimum you know, uh, of the data that is required to uh, to solve that problem, to answer that question. Um, and, you know, when that is a question, the way you answer that question may be by just putting the data set together together, and, and then doing a query out of, out of that. Maybe it, it is putting the data set together and then training a model with that new data set, right? So, uh, so we have your two end of the spectrum there, the, the, the people looking for data kind of problem and then the and the modeling uh, kind of problem that you know solve find a, a, the similar solution right once you have integrated your data set you have a proper identity management you have proper um, ontology uh, let's not be afraid of the word uh, common model uh, for for your for your data uh, then you're already uh, went a long way I think yeah that makes sense so it, it sounds like between kind of the start from one direction and move to the other sort of a one size fits all approach and more of a um a balanced approach it's definitely more you're saying more on the balanced approach like follow the pain as you said juan uh follow um you know where that most valuable use case is just bring in the data that that you need for that use case because it's it's easy to boil the ocean if you try to integrate with all your data try to solve all the use cases all at once take too much of a platform oriented approach too early um, that can cause problems for you and uh, I think that makes a lot of sense to, to to take that in more of a stepwise way do you do you feel like certain use cases are resonating more um, in terms of a starting point with knowledge graph like for example is you know uh, you know cataloging and metadata management as a starting point or you know let me do something 360 as a starting point or let me do, you know, some sort of machine learning model to solve some sort of, uh, you know, a, a, a financial problem? Like, do you see certain use cases as better starting points or more common starting points? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, as you said, you know, metadata management, the uh, the integration of the uh, the modeling uh, and, and the data, uh, that, that is definitely a use case. Uh, and a, a big one is master data management. So master data management is an old term that it's, it's painful to say it <laughs> because I, so I came to that term. I, I was, I, I've seen that term around, but I, I, I come from academia uh, and then I switched to the word of startups and then enterprise came later. Uh, and so along the, this way, I've seen master data management several times, not knowing exactly what it meant. And I arrived in, uh, you know, an enterprise, a larger companies. I, I worked at Jefferies uh, investment bank. Uh, and now there was, you know, it's enterprise and there, there are data problems. And I see what people mean. So I have to look at, you know, I'm, you know, developing the, their a knowledge graph for, for, the, for the company. And I'm seeing there's a master data management solution. And I'm like, what is this? You know, oh, okay. So it means you have entities, you have data points, uh, resources that have different IDs, but are actually the same thing. And you need to relate them together uh, for, you know, being able to identify what is what. And so are we saying that knowledge, together. are knowledge graphs the modern master data management? Yeah, because the thing you, you discovered is that these things had organization, person, and a bunch of other concepts. And the software was kind of holding that, right? Like telling you what they would support. And I'm exaggerating now. The, the systems I've, are are evolved, and you can define your own entity types, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it felt to me like, okay, you why why don't you just build an ontology and maintain a table of, of you know identifiers? And then it worked 
it worked very well and uh you know save costs on on expensive software but i i'm i'm going to i'm not going to make friends uh, no no but but this but this is going to be tim what's your definition of mdm of master data management well i mean, in the in a past episode i've called it fancy data integration <laughs> but i mean today when we talk when we talk about knowledge graphs today and what what, what i what we started off with like bob Moga's definition it's a database Right, where you're keeping the modeling of the business concepts and the relationships between them and the rules around them, it that's fancy data integration and and you're keeping identity like that's master data management. Mm -hmm. I know we all kind of so, don't like to say this so word. You but said the word. You say identity. I call it identity management, and I like that term much better. Uh, it says what it says. You're managing the identity of your data resources, right? So uh, Tesla is a company, right? It appears everywhere in my information system for some reason. Uh, and uh, I know how to identify it. How, I, I know what are the IDs of that resources everywhere. Uh, and that obviously helped uh, retrieving the data and, and processing it. And th I think this is one of the things that when, when you, when I start talking to people who realize I need to start paying more attention to the, the models, the schemas, the ontologies, Right? I need to start paying attention to the identities and managing the identities. When people start realizing that that's a pain, they realize you're, you're talking about knowledge graphs. If you're not there yet, if you're not thinking that's a problem for you, then I think you're just like, yeah, you're just dumping your data in the lake, you're doing your traditional analytics, you're doing reporting, and you're just doing the same thing that you still need to go do, right? But if you want to take it to the next level to go back to what their starting point of, Oh, I want to be able to have aut automated decision making. It's like, well, you really need to understand what your data is, how it's actually connected. And I see you coming here. Knowledge first. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag knowledge first, everyone. Um, well, I, think, I think that's the, that's the thing. Is like, if, if we if we're only focusing on the data, give me data, give me data, put it in the lake, and that's what I need. Uh, I mean, that's what we've been doing. I, I, this is my spiel. I, I, by now, people know my spiel, right? You're, well, I mean, it's always good to do repetition, but but I think what's an interesting observation, at least of mine here, is like whether you're talking about like knowledge management or metadata management or master data management, like these are all fields that have been around for a long time. So it's not like a new use case here where we're saying, oh, now that we have knowledge graph, we're going to like do this brand new thing that we've never done before. I mean, I'm sure there are some use cases you can say that, right? But like a lot of these use cases have been around for a long time. Um, is that kind of the magic of knowledge graphs is that it's not like some kind of special new thing. It's actually a better technology, a better way to solve some use cases that we've struggled with for a long time. I would, well, I, I think it's, these ideas aren't new, right? I mean, we, we, managing identity is not a new thing, right? Managing right. The, the modeling isn't a new thing. We've been doing it. It's just like, I think finally it's coming back to, uh, to, to, we're now talking about this. We we talked about it ago, and then and then so much stuff happened in the world, right? It's just, I need more big data and all that stuff. And I think we're coming back to it. And I think at the same time, we've had these trends of of graphs, right? I think it's all just converging nowadays. Um, I I'm seeing here somebody on the chat. It's greetings from Greece, from New York and Austin. And I had, so uh, so Focalis has a great question. Can should we build data domains before we have a business ontology model? Can we have a knowledge graph without the ontology? Front you want to take that? <laughs> I'd say um, a knowledge graph without an ontology um, is a bit naked, right? Uh, it's a bunch of data that you put together and, and interconnect, but you need to qualify your data. You, you need to have a definition of the terms that are in your knowledge graph. And it doesn't have to be ontologies, you know, sometimes a scary, scary word, right? And there, there are a lot of different degrees uh, to what an ontology is. It can be a list of terms that we all agree on the meaning, right? Uh, so if there's pe person, if there's customer, if, there, if there's organization, and we agree on the meaning either as part of a data domain, as you say, or, or as part of an organization, then you know we, we have some structure there. Same with the relationship that we find in the data. So um, th that's, that's, that's the basic level. And then we can go up and add more 
we can add hierarchy of concepts, right? So uh, that adds more uh, depth uh, to the ontology. Uh, we can add constraints. We can add rules that govern the data, business rules, data quality rules, uh, a, a lot of other things. So when we say ontology, uh, it's a large, large spectrum of what, what is there. I think, yes, uh, a knowledge graph is a knowledge graph if there is a schema associated to, to it, if there is an ontology. It's just that there are different levels to, to what that, an ontology is. And, and you said something earlier, which I think is, is something important to call out is, let's not be afraid of the word ontology anymore. I know for so long we called it, it's the old word, let's not say it. But I have the impression that it's coming back because we're realizing that we need to manage the knowledge and what the stuff means and need to acknowledge. And, and even if it's like, there are different words or the, I mean, the, the different words mean the same thing or so forth. Like that mm -hmm. needs to be modeled somewhere. And I want to start connecting that with, Hey, these people are using this word. That means this thing. And that, again, again, that's why identifiers are mm -hmm. important. I think I have the impression, I mean, I'm biased. I live in, I, I live in a particular bubble, but mm -hmm. I just feel that mm -hmm. there's more people entering my bubble. I think you touched here with to a very important problem uh, that is also uh, very dear to me uh, that, that is what we're tackling with the Knowledge Graph Conference. Um, I think that field in general has uh, suffered uh, and is still suffering from over complexity, um, very deep standards, uh, very complex, you know, a lot of effort put into developing the technology and, and, and technology standards uh, before even applications came. Um, and, and so, so at the goal of the conference, we created the conference to democratize the, the technology, make, make the space clear, have the opportunity to explain what is a knowledge graph, what is an ontology, how things work, how they are used, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so there's this democratization part, but there's also an educational part, right? Um, so we're, as part of the conference, and um, call bullshit on the ad if if you want <laughs> but as part of the conference we're, we're also developing education that's that's a very important thing we we just launched the uh, open uh, knowledge graph curriculum uh, so we're developing a curriculum a set of classes and you know if we project ourselves you know depending on how we manage to to develop that but you know we we're developing training programs certification programs um you know online learning platforms so so that when you hear ontology, it's now clear there's, you know, there's a place to learn uh, that is not a, you know, 50 page um, W3C specifications. And, and I'm not saying those are not useful. They are, they, they are needed. They are required. They are the fundamentals. They are the, the fundamentals of what we do, right? Um, but, um, you know, when you're fixing a car, you're a mechanics, you know, we don't throw you you know, quantum physics or uh, fundamental physics, right? You, you have uh, recipes that are there to help you fixing the car, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's similar. It, it's these kind of things that are, and that we are, we're also working on. This is super exciting to know that you're, you're, you're building this. And I think this is something that the community really needs. And just people, there needs to be wider kind of education. I mean, I'm seeing the presentations that we have here. I mean, these are companies, this is UBS is presenting, Intuit is presenting, all these very large companies are presenting the, of, of not just their ideas, things that are actually in production right now. Um, just so I'm seeing Matthew has a question. How would you explain the importance of a knowledge graph to a CEO that is not a technical person? I, I mean, my immediate answer here is like, there's a bunch of talks just today that, that you should be able to go send them to your CEO. Like, I mean, the keynote from Bob Muglia, the former CEO of Snowflake, for God's sake, like that's a, that's a talk you can go give to, 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 to your CEO to do that. And examples, in a nutshell, I'm just getting more confirmation for, even from our previous discussion here. It's like, it's just data integration done right. It's data integration where you're like taking into account not just the data, but you're taking about into account the knowledge, the identity, the semantics, the models, which is something fundamentally a different way of how we've been doing just data integration over and over mm -hmm. again. So that, that's my quick it's, you know, there, Some companies use that, that metaphor of a brain uh the the brain it's the brain of your enterprise right your brain gathers all the signals from your body the visual signal the audio signal the uh, sensitivity signal <laughs> anyways uh and, and then processes all these signals uh, and integrates them together and there are different parts in the brain that are 
uh, that are dedicated to process certain kind of signals. And then there are connections between all these parts together. And, uh, you know, there's there's a common language that is spoken uh, uh, in the brain. I mean, most of them, at least. <laughs> and uh, and that's, you know, I, I think it, the analogy works, right? Uh, that's what a knowledge graph is for, for your organization. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the program here at the Knowledge Graph. I mean, because I really want to go promote the Knowledge Graph conference. You mean talking about all the education stuff, but what's going on? What are what are folks missing out on right now? A lot of very interesting stuff. And you know what? You can still go get a ticket. Uh, the platform is amazing. When it, as soon as the talk is finished, you can replay. Right. So all the talks until today are available there on, on the platform for three weeks. So. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, guys. Yeah. <laughs> get, but, get but, get. So we, we do have, let me go to the list of tracks, maybe. Um, so we mentioned the ontology and taxonomy track, where we talk about modeling. Uh, uh, what in general, we, we're focusing a lot on use cases, right? Because uh, we hear these kind of questions, you know, how do I talk to my CEO? Uh, how do I convince uh, someone? How do I explain uh, what what is, how useful is a knowledge graph? So we have a lot of that. Uh, across different topics. Uh, so ontology and taxonomy, we have graph data science. Uh, we do have um, a track on EU projects and, and, and uh, more academic oriented uh, projects, uh, NSF funded projects. Uh, we do have, and you need to help me uh, as well. We did the, the entire data architecture track. The data architecture track, track yes. The a big track on business use cases as well that is really focused on focused on the use cases. And this year, so we're uh, innovating there or expanding our program with a whole. Uh, that's the largest track actually on uh, graph deep learning. And so uh, this, we really have like the best, the best researchers and practitioners in the world, uh, uh, major, you know, people from major companies, major uh, universities, uh, uh, big names. Um, I'm, I'm really proud about this, uh, having uh, about this program. We, we had a great track chairs, uh, Professor Yingding from Austin, actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, Kihei uh, from uh, Nextdoor. Uh, he was at LinkedIn uh, previously. Um, so they, they really uh, did set up a great uh, program there. We have panels. We had over 35 shops and tutorials. That was Monday and Tuesday uh, on various topics all around this. So, you know, learning, learning uh, material. And yeah, so four days, two days of workshops and tutorials, two days of main conference that hybrid here in New York and online, four tracks in parallel. And tomorrow, uh, sorry, Friday will be uh, um, online, uh, virtual only, but um, AWS was nice to uh, give us their space in New York in Midtown. So we'll go uh, watch uh, for those who are still there, uh, over there. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds like this conference is a really great opportunity through, depending on what kind of track you're interested in, there's a lot of different ways you can experience it, which is which is great. Um, and... Um, some other things I did not mention, let me do. Uh, we do have a band uh, that composed uh, music for the conference. Uh, and the band is called Strings Not Things. Uh, <laughs> if you know about the space, uh, this will uh, ring a bell. The original Knowledge Graph paper was called S Things Not Strings. Um, and the band is composing music, especially for uh, classical music for, for the conference. We also do have a startup pitch event that we're running for the third year uh, we do two winners that will be announced tomorrow uh, at the closing of the conference so uh, come and, and learn who who's winning we had over 40 applications this year which is big last year was 12 I think uh, so it really shows that the space is growing um, um, and others uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> parties uh, a, a lot of parties oh yeah we also have tomorrow a whole uh, tools and demonstration track uh, okay, so if you're looking uh, to learn about tools in a really compact uh, manner, uh, so over half a day, uh, we'll have, I think, 35 tools demonstrated. Uh, so that's 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 also, I think, very cool. Yeah, I think uh, the, this is, I'm glad that we're talking about this so listeners can realize, heck, I think we've, we're missing out on this. And <laughs> heck, you can go, you can go still watch everything and, and, and be prepared for next year too. So Yes, exactly, yes.
folks know uh, to ask their boss uh, ahead of time, right? Hey, I need to go to the Knowledge Graph conference. <laughs> I love it. So, um, you know, Francois, I think this has been a really awesome conversation. Actually, before we start to go into, you know, our lightning round and some of these last bits here, would love to actually come back a little bit to that vision that you painted at the beginning, where you talked about automated decision making and how that kind of is becoming more of a North Star for the Knowledge Graph community. Um, actually, kind of see, I see a question here from Vino on LinkedIn. Automated decision making has been happening in factory automation through uh, PLC and SCADA. How far are we from doing that kind of decision automation in business process? Um, I think I actually want to even zoom out from that question a little bit and just ask you, like, what are some of the most exciting things happening around automated decision making? Like, what are what are you seeing that is really exciting from your perspective, whether it's something a company is doing or, or, or a use case you're especially excited about? It's a tough one. <laughs> it's 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 addition. Uh, I I do not have a, a, like a direct example. I um, and I, you know, I, I like when I, usually I like to answer the question directly and not try to segue around uh, <laughs> to go around the All question. Right, so you're you're being and, honest and right talk. now. You're... I'm I'm being honest, right? right. Exactly. No, that's good. <laughs> I, I could start to your question and talk about something else. I, I don't have a direct answer. Um, if you want me to talk about something else, though, <laughs> no, but, but I can tell you. But yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. but but I mean, let 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 let's let's brainstorm about this, right? I mean, the 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 picture that you're that you're that you're talking about early on. I mean, this is something that we should really be striving for. Um, and I don't I don't think so much. I think we're we're sometimes like way out there. Um, kind of way, way too much in the sky and in, 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 in the heavens yeah. and stuff. Okay. And we need to bring it down a little bit, but not too much, right? So, okay. I, I mean, an example that I, that we have, I mean, Tim, you would imagine, mm. given this is like, the CEO should walk into a, walk into the office and ask their their personal agent, uh, how, are, how is the growth of our products with Zoomers? I, right. So I I think I disagree. Let me uh, politely disagree. Oh, perfect. Can I? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's yes. Yes. interesting. Yeah. So I think we're we're it's the tradition, right? We're seeing this uh, BI as we you know the CEO wants to uh, be able to ask the question and get the answers uh, very quickly. I think I think the next is we're brainstorming. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next is the the company uh, that maybe won't have a CEO, by the way, we have DAOs and distributed organizations, and we're looking into that for KGC, by the way, where, you know, there are stakeholders and the stakeholders, they decide on uh, strategic decisions. They make strategic decisions uh, for the company. Where, what do they think is the company? They, they de define the business rules, the rules that should govern the business. Maybe it, it it's kind of, not even the law, but the, the moral, the morality of the company. What are the meta rules that should govern that company? What are we doing? Where where is that going? And once this is defined, then you know agents are acting on that and and then getting at, to get you know the, the processes that will answer uh, the, these uh, these questions. And that may seem to be really out there and and completely um, you know far away, far fetched. It is, you know, a little bit, but I think that the, what I was describing earlier, this process of having an agent, the, the exact example that I took, like an agent setting the price for a catalog, right? We can imagine that, right? And what we can imagine doing that today, right? This is, and that exists, you know, I, I, that exists. I, I don't have the concrete example to give you, but um, you can have uh, build that without even a knowledge graph. You you can have this kind of decision making. Uh, so it's no, I I, uh, I appreciate. It. I mean, I think I, I agree with you. I think well, there is there, there's two aspects. One, there's like we've been used we've been used to just like reporting, right? I got this question, give me an answer, mm -hmm. right? And then I can get more creative on the questions, uh, which makes it harder. But I said, but it's still like give as it, as input, give me a question and you want an answer. But I think the shift is. There is no question, right? The, the 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 autonomous system, the autonomous enterprise, will be able to go kind of figure Just things out their own. Optimize for that objective. You get objectives. That that was you the give word. yeah. You give an objective. An objective, and then 
here you go. Now optimize for that objective. And the agents are, yeah. are working. And, and, and this goes back to the original visions of the semantic web. I mean, you, 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 you look at the original papers, there's agents on the web. and Travel agent, the automated travel yeah, agent, right? the classic. So I think to go answer your question, Tim, I think there's a, bu there's a bunch of vision papers from the 90s that we should just go reread again to get inspired to say, hey, let's not forget about kind of the North Star here. This is where we should strive and just let's bring it into the context of of today. I like that. I, you know, I, I like where, Francois, you took this because I think it's breaking my frame on this a little bit. And I think in a really positive way, which is that, uh, Juan, when you brought up, hey, there's this vision and, and, you know, we gave a webinar talk on this uh, several months ago, right, where we said, like, well, as the CEO, you should be able to ask the question, like, Hey, like how much sales did I have last year that for Zoomers and you know, like that kind of thing? And where should we go from here? That's still that's still a um it's still a a, a person asking the question, doing the interrogation to get to something. It's just a new spin on the same sort of business intelligence we've been doing, right? Just mm -hmm. a little bit fancier. Um, but the true shift is when I turn on the intelligent agent. I've done the right things, right? And it makes sure that I hit my sales. And it tells me, hey, a warning, I'm noticing something weird here. You you, you might want to, you know, I, I now need a human to take care of something, right? That touches to, uh, yeah, so totally. <laughs> and so that touches to um, um, one of the tracks that I haven't men mentioned at the conference, but we have a decentralization uh, track. And um, I mentioned the DAO, right? The decentralized uh, autonomous organization, right? And we touch this with the word of, you know, crypto um, uh, and uh, and smart contracts, right? So I think here, uh, if we if you say these objectives that you have for your company, that so look at the decentralized organization, uh, you fix the objectives by uh, drawing a contract so the stakeholders in the company write a contract and the contract the smart contract is the objectives of the company right of the issue. Uh, so we, we have a uh, we we've had for the first time we have this um uh, uh origin trail which is a, a this uh decentralized protocol uh for connecting data right so it's a knowledge graph on blockchain uh to uh to, to, to summarize it. Well, okay. That one, we can have another big discussion and a lot of, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, no, and totally, I, I'm also very conscious with, uh, uh every blockchain uh, project, but it, projects, but if there's one that, uh, seems to be interesting and after the conference, I am starting to have a, a, a different view on this. Um, you know, I think this gets into a picture where there are interesting things to do, right? They, mm -hmm. um, so, so that that part, part, right? Having decentralized organizations that are ruled by smart contracts, I buy into that vision, right? So the implementations may be, uh, you know, sometimes flawed, sometimes scams, uh, but not all of them. Uh, and at least the vision, I think, uh, deserves to be pursued. All right. Well, with that, let's move to our lightning round, which is sponsored by Data World, which lets us do this today. <laughs> so. All right, let me go kick this off. First question, will knowledge graphs eventually be seen as more important to the data stack than the data warehouse? Whoa, can you repeat? Will knowledge graphs eventually be seen as more important to the data stack than the data warehouse? Yeah, of course, right? Because at some point something becomes a commodity right? Your relational database is a commodity. So you, you don't even talk about it, right? It's there, it's, it works. So you have your, you know, data um, analytics platform and storage that goes with it and et cetera, et cetera. Now what's next, right? What, how, if, if that works, right? Well, what's the next thing that, that it matters? All right. Tim. Like that. All right. Um, so my question, uh, meaning, is very important to knowledge graphs, the context, right? And you also talked about democratization. Um, so do you believe that uh, anyone in a company is going to be contributing to the knowledge graph? Or do you think it's always going to be more of a specialist kind of, uh, you know, expert activity? Um, clearly, yeah, that, that's a great question. And because that, that's, um, 
like back to concrete day-to-day -day, uh, operations on uh, implementing this in, in organizations, right? Um, how do you start with sharing these meetings? And I don't want to advertise for your company, but I think you know the first thing to do is really to to show that the there are discrepancies in the meaning of a thing. The way we understand the data is different from one person or one domain, one team from the other, right? So you first you need to expose that, uh, and then. Once you expose something, you know, then it becomes visible and then things start to change because it's visible now that there, there are these discrepancies. Um, and, and now you need to discuss, you need to talk and you need to converge on, on the meaning. Uh, and so every, 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 everyone who has some sort of uh, uh, responsibility for, for, for what, you know, what is discussed uh, will be involved, uh, obviously. So uh, expertise, everybody involved, you know, depending on what you're doing and what your domain is and what your expertise, what your knowledge uh, around this is, um, you, you will be involved, yes. Um, I think we, we, since I've been working in that field, so I was in, in the semantic web originally uh, in, in academia and everything, it's always stealing the knowledge from the experts. And uh, it, it feel there's something kind of wicked, <laughs> wicked there, uh, like to that what we do when we build an ontology is, you, get an expert and you say, give me your expertise and put it there, right? And and put it in, in this, you know, digital, uh, machine readable, uh, understandable right. format. I like mm -hmm. that answer. Next question. Do you feel knowledge engineers or knowledge scientists will emerge as a major role for organizations? Yes. Yes. Let's keep that one simple. Yes. Tim, yes. final one. All right. Final lightning round question. Uh, you talked about automated decision making. Do you think that's going to become a field in and of itself? Like, you know, we talk about BI and metadata management. There's going to be like automated decision making, or it's just just going to infiltrate into everything else. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can make predictions. It's so uh, it's such a, you know, what is the term that we both we we were having a discussion like during the conference. I don't know, or maybe last night at, at the party or uh, before. Uh, a, you know those terms right what makes who knows if knowledge graph will be the term that that stays i, I don't even know like i'm I, I think it makes sense but who knows like the, all those concepts uh are come and go you know cloud emerged as the term that stayed and because it encompassed something and came at the right time but there were systems were a big term as well at some point but it's not the one that you know kind of made it to uh commodity i would say uh so i and I, I don't really care about it, right? Like that was going to be my follow-up question: is like, well, do you care? Do you do you have a preference? <laughs> well, I obviously now I've been running that conference, and my name is really much associated to at my heart with knowledge graphs. Uh, and uh, but no, I you know I I care about the vision and uh, you know everything that leads to it. All right. So with that, we're going to go to our our mesh minute. Have one minute to pontificate whatever you want about data mesh. Go. Yes, <laughs> fifty-eight seconds. <laughs> That's very stressful. Uh, <laughs> data mesh. Yeah, data mesh is great. We we had last year uh, at the conference. We had Zamak uh, give a talk, and we also had on on data mesh. And and since then, it's been like boom, 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 boom everywhere. Um, yeah, data mesh, a mesh is a graph, right? It's connection, connections together, everything is connected. Um, you know, here we're talking about way to organize uh, an organization, way to, um, yeah, so yeah, data mesh is great. It's it's great. I mean, it's the kind of thing when you hear about something new, you're like, wow, super excited, that is great and stuff. And then you go into it and say, and then when it makes sense, it's clear, you say, yeah, this is the way, this is a new concept, it makes sense. And now I acquired it and yeah. All right. So data mesh connections. Connections graph data mesh. It's so it's cool. All right. Perfect. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> All right, Tim. Tim T T T Tim takes us away with takeaways first. Go, Tim. All right. Tim's takeaways. So you started off by kind of defining um knowledge graph and we and kind of articulated it as complex problems often uh, can't be solved easily with SQL. 
Uh, they need a lot of people to come together. They need a lot of data to come together. Knowledge graphs are, and I bolded the word, expressive. They're expressive enough to be able to work across all that data, all that context, all those people, and the complexity of those problems, um, which I, I thought was a nice way to think about it and, and, a, and a nice definition to sort of add to the, the, the armory here of sort of knowledge graph uh, definitions. And Juan, you noted uh, in reply to something Francois said about the, you know, Bob Moogley and the talk that he gave around uh, the keynote. And uh, it, it seems like in general, there's an appreciation of what it can bring to organizations, what it can bring to different use cases and its importance. And, and I think that's important for everyone to know that knowledge graphs really are moving into um, into the mainstream and the main mindset of folks that are really trying to accomplish important things in data and in knowledge. Um, you mentioned that Knowledge Graph Conference is in its fourth year, and it kind of brings up the question of where is this all going? And you stated that the goal is around automated decision making. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of steps that we have to get there, you know, still a lot of work is manual. There's a lot of modernization going on, but ultimately if we can implement, uh, knowledge graphs and knowledge graph approaches, or maybe more importantly, a knowledge first approach, uh, then we can get to that automated decision-making. Uh, we want the intelligent agent to be able to take actions for us, right? So we then talked about like, where do you all start? Where should you start? We'll start with the pain. Right. And this sort of spectrum of like metadata and governance to more advanced uh, uh, knowledge graph sort of applications is maybe a false dichotomy. And really, it's just, hey, what problem are you trying to solve? Uh, don't throw all the data in there and try to boil the ocean. Just start with what's right to solve that problem. So if you if you've got metadata management problems then start with that, if you've got some kind of identity that you want to master uh, that's important to your business and, and you're challenged by that, maybe that's where you start. Right. It's not one size fits all. So I thought that was some very practical advice there. And then Juan, what about your takeaways? Well, so a couple here. I am actually let's not be afraid of the word ontology. And I think that's something that we need to kind of, it's up to us. Like I, I was the first one to say, hey, let's not go say the word ontology. Let's be quiet with the O word. I think it's time to go change that. And I think uh, you said something I'm quoting here, an enterprise knowledge graph without an ontology is a bit, I love that. That's it. Otherwise it's just a bunch, it's a network of things, right? You want to give it some meaning. Um, we are seeing the progress about knowledge graphs. I mean, there's a just everything that's being presented here at the conference is evidence of the progress that has been occurring, right? I mean, heck, Bob Muglia, which is the former CEO of Snowflake, which is a relational data warehouse company, is talking about knowledge graphs, for God's sake. I mean, that definitely means something. We, you said the startups last year, there were 12 competing, now there's 40. Like, I can't wait what's going to happen next year. All of this is evidence that is showing that progression. And this ultimate vision, right? The future shouldn't be about asking... Uh, asking for information, right? It's empowering that agent to take actions on your behalf. And I think it's about agents, the autonomous enterprise, that you have an objective of your enterprise and the agent takes all that knowledge and is able to go maximize everything towards that objective. Great. How did we do? Thank you both. Yeah, this is great. Good yeah. summary? It all right. Good, yeah. All right, I'll throw it back to you. So two questions. What's your advice and who should invite next? Um, what is my advice? My advice is don't record a podcast live when you haven't slept much over the past <laughs> weeks <laughs> because you organize a conference and you have two babies home. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> and you Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And who should we invite next? Uh, what about Jamie Taylor? Jamie Taylor uh, was the main architect of Freebase. Freebase became the Google Knowledge Graph, and that was the first knowledge graph, or actually the first thing to be called a knowledge graph mm -hmm. because they kind of coined the, the term. I like that idea. Jamie and Jamie is great. He is. Well, Francois, it has been a pleasure. Um, just a reminder, next week, uh, we are have Sarah Krasnick from, she's a data engineer. She publishes a lot of great stuff on LinkedIn. I love following her on LinkedIn and Twitter. She's been ma making a lot of great posts and we're just gonna be talking about data and, and value and how to get value with all the tools and everything. So that's next week. And with that, Francois, thank you so much. Thanks to data.world who always gives us the opportunity to go do this. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Tim. Cheers, Francois. Cheers, Mark.